Hey folks, it is Sunday evening, April 5th, and um, just wanted to, uh, like we did last evening, post a, a briefer uh, message. Um, if you've been following, what we're trying to do this week is talk about uh, what I'm calling the most important week in the history of the world. Hopefully you got to see the broadcast this morning uh, where we talked about Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. And what I'm trying to do is each day this week post something talking about the events of that particular day in the last week of Jesus. Um, we'll see how it works. I've never I've done it this way before, of course. I have uh, you know, preach sermons on these passages, and so sort of piecemeal have uh, have talked about these events, and then I've taught taught this in Bible classes where I had uh, actual faces in front of me, and we could interact a little bit, and taught it to university students, but um, to um, to do so to a screen. I know there are people out there listening, but we can't really talk. Um, this is different. We'll see how it works. We'll give it the old college try. How about that? Uh, but just for a few minutes tonight, I wanted to talk about some some other events or another event that, that took place on the Sunday before Resurrection Sunday, the Sunday before the first Lord's Day. And uh, as we said um, this morning, Jesus comes into Jerusalem on that Sunday before, riding a donkey, and he's uh, welcomed by the crowds in a very enthusiastic way, people shouting Hosanna and laying palm fronds on the ground in front of him and giving him uh, a welcome into the city. Um, we know that, that at some point after that, Jesus goes up into the temple area, and he, it, the text says he looks around. It uh, doesn't say what he does exactly. He looks around, and then he leaves. And on Sunday night, he spends the night in Bethany with his friends uh, in the little town across the hill from Jerusalem. You, you wonder what, what was going through the Lord's mind as he looked around the temple um, we know that on on uh, Monday, the next day, that he's going to be pretty upset about what he sees in the temple. I doubt what he saw on Sunday made him very happy. And maybe that's on his mind uh, on Sunday night into the next day, as he made his plans for that next day. Uh, but before that happened, um, toward evening perhaps, on on Sunday evening, uh, there is an interesting interaction and some words that Jesus sh Jesus shares with a different group. And uh, again, this comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 12. John's the only one that tells us about this uh, when you consider the four Gospels. And let me read the first part of this, and then we'll come back uh, to read the rest. But beginning in verse 20, this is after the entry into the city and so forth. Um, remember, we're at the time of Passover, and so great crowds are in Jerusalem. It says in John 12, 20, Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks, that is, Gentiles. Not necessarily from Greece, but uh, that's the way Scripture refers to non-Jews, Gentiles. Among those who went to worship at the feast, the Passover, were some Greeks, so these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them. We'll get to his answer there in a moment, but uh, it's interesting that here, here he is in the city of the Jews in Jerusalem, and there is this group of Gentiles, apparently people who are believers in God. Uh, they have not become Jews. They have not converted to Judaism. 
but they are God-fearers. Um, they, they consider their belief in God serious enough that they travel to Jerusalem at Passover time. And somehow they know something about Jesus and they want to see him. As far as we know, uh, they don't really get an audience with Jesus. Now, perhaps they did, but it doesn't specifically say that Jesus um, had, had time with them. All it does is go on and, and uh, outline what Jesus says uh, when he's told there's this group of Greeks who say, we wish to see Jesus. Uh, I've always loved that phrase, we would see Jesus. Isn't that what we all want to do? And these Gentiles want to see him. If you think about what Jesus is about to do in this, the most important week in the history of the world, what he's about to do is the very thing these Gentiles need more than anything. That is to sacrifice himself for their sins, for the sins of the world. And so he's going to talk about that in the rest of this reading. And it's almost as if Jesus is saying, the most important thing for you is to let me go about uh, my mission this week and, and offer myself. And, uh, you know, the things that Jesus is going to say in the next few verses they're, they're easy for us to take for granted because hopefully we understand them. But the people who first heard them likely didn't, at least not for a while. And I want to reflect on that um, after we read it here. Uh, but again, this group has come requesting to see Jesus. Verse 23, And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. And then, beginning at verse 27, the Lord's words turn even more intense and focused on what's about to happen in this week. He says, Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? But for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that stood there and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So the crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? So Jesus said to them, The light is among you for a little while longer. Walk while you have the light lest darkness overtake you. The one who walks in the darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. And then it closes by saying, when Jesus had said these things, he departed and hid himself from them. Well, there's obviously so much there, but, but uh, the one thing that I wanted to, just reflect on devotionally with you this evening is you have to sort of put yourself in the minds of these first hearers, including the disciples who have been with Jesus for three, three and a half years. Uh, but these Greeks, these Gentiles who, who want uh, to, to have time with Jesus, you have to imagine that they did not really get what Jesus said. Uh, in these words here in John 12, at least not fully. And 
they didn't get them for some time. All of Jesus' talk about the light and, and him being lifted up from the earth and uh, the fact that he's going to sacrifice himself and so forth, they didn't understand that for at least a week and probably longer than that. It's amazing to me as a preacher that Jesus was willing to to preach sermons like that. I know there are other preachers that uh, are tuning in to these videos as I'm listening to yours uh, as you as you broadcast, but we're trained and 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 when we stand before an audience, we want to be understood, don't we? Uh, that's why we illustrate, we try and relate, we try and connect with our audience. We don't go up there and say things that we're sure they don't get. But Jesus often did. Uh, that's, that's why he used parables. Um, but here, not even in parables, they're just things that he says here that it's just about impossible that they understood. And that was okay with the Lord. Jesus was not building a mega church. He was not um, trying to become the most popular preacher at Passover. Um, Jesus was on a mission to, to glorify the Father, uh, to do the Father's will. And if it took a while for them to get it, to understand it, that was okay with him. I, as a preacher, I don't know that I've got the courage to, to do that kind of thing. I don't know about you guys, but uh, to intentionally say things that I know people aren't going to get, that's a risky thing as a public speaker and, and as a proclaimer of God's truth. And maybe we're not supposed to do that these days, but Jesus certainly often said things that took time to understand and appreciate. And he's talking about things that are going to happen in four or five days from when he spoke them and um, and it's going to totally change the world and it's just amazing to me that uh, the way he communicates and and the richness and, and depth of it so this is what happens as, as far as we know is what's recorded in the gospels on on sunday the sunday before one week before resurrection sunday Jesus comes into the city, he goes up to the temple, looks around for a while, he has an interaction with his disciples and, and with these Gentiles of some sort, and he says some things that, that the crowd probably just didn't pick up on, um, at least for a while. When he had been crucified, and especially when he had been raised from the dead, the understanding came and that's maybe a key for us you know if we're struggling uh, maybe we're not in a relationship with Jesus yet and we're struggling to understand uh, maybe we need to look at the resurrection and understand the power there that's when the light went on for for uh, the disciples and for those that were interested outsiders who were checking Jesus out uh, tomorrow, uh, sometime we'll post a video that talks about the events of Monday. Some very interesting things happen on Monday. Jesus has an interaction with a fig tree. <laughs> Jesus has an interaction with some hypocrites up at the temple. And uh, then he will go back at the end of the day uh, to Bethany, where he seems to spend nearly every night of the week. And... Uh, We'll talk a little bit about those important events and those texts. But uh, hope you're, you've had a good Lord's Day and uh, that these reflections from John chapter 12 are helpful to you in thinking about our Lord this week, this week uh, where many people are thinking about the most important week in the history of the world. God bless you. Take care.